Much of the secondary information that marketing researchers use comes from external sources, government sources, trade associations, professional journals, academic journals, commercial services, and social media and web tools highlight some of the key categories where we can find useful secondary information. In the following slides, one caveat before we begin, we live in a world where Googling has made it so easy for us to find the types of information that we usually need to solve day-to-day -day problems. However, Googling or standard web searching is almost always inadequate to properly find the most useful secondary information to answer a marketing research question. There's two primary reasons why standard web search tools don't quite get us where we need to be when it comes time to go searching for secondary information. First, a lot of the secondary information that marketers might want to use is actually stored within some sort of online database where we have to actually interface with the database itself, deriving queries within the database to extract the information. So that means we need to know where those secondary databases are and we'd have a deep intimate knowledge of what those databases can provide to us. Google won't do that for us. Secondly, a lot of the useful information that we want to have gain access to is hidden behind paywalls. Trade associations, for example, often collect useful information to marketers, but then they hide that information behind a paywall that you have to subscribe to or pay for the report. Luckily for us, in many cases, our academic libraries also aggregate the this, this same types of information. Government sources provide enormous amounts of secondary information that's useful to marketers. This can come from local, state, national, and international government sources. The example that we're going to use here is perhaps one of the most common sources used by marketing researchers in the United States, and that is secondary information that comes from the United States Census Bureau. Now, if you go to the census.gov website, there's numerous different tools that the census has built out to make it easy and useful to search from the, uh, the wide variety of information they have available. Let's illustrate just one of these tools in the videos here. There's a variety of different ways that we can explore data in the census website and a variety of different ways that we can generate data tables and visualizations. I'm just going to illustrate one. So going to data.census.gov takes us to a place where we can see pre-populated tables, generate profiles of regions. But we're going to take a look at this micro data generator where you can sort of create your own precisely customized report. In this illustration, we're going to imagine that we're a marketer who's interested in providing some sort of ride sharing service for commuters in the San Diego County region. Now, what would be very interesting to us is if we could understand the average travel to work time, depending on where somebody lives in the San Diego County area. So we will select the most recent microdata sample and the most current year available at this time as of 2020 is the 2018 data set. Next, we have a wide variety of variables that we can select from. We can filter by topic, or we can simply scroll through the massive list of available options. Fortunately for us, right here at front, we see travel time to work. Clicking on the details provides us information that tells us that the travel time to work is 1 to 200. So for the few people who may travel more than 200 minutes to get to work, they would just be coded as 200. We'll ignore that issue. That's probably not particularly relevant for us. And for someone who's not a worker or worked at home, they'd be coded as zero. We're going to eventually want to ignore these individuals because they're not even relevant to our understanding of what travel time looks like. So we select our variable. Next, we select the relevant geographies. And we don't want to look at region, division, or state. We actually want to drive much deeper into micro data areas. I can scroll all the way down to San Diego County and unfortunately I have to select each one of these individually. So let's speed that up. Okay, with all of our areas selected. Next, we'll select our data cart. Remember we selected our travel time to work variable where we want to exclude those individuals who are not a worker or work for home, so the NA responses. Obviously, if we included these individuals, it would decrease the average time. And now we simply go ahead and view our table. And we've successfully generated information about travel time to work. And by clicking here, let's see if it sorts it. Sure does sorts it by low to high. And for those of us familiar with San Diego County, we may not be too surprised with some of these results. Uh, individuals who live around Claremont, Kearney Mesa, the Mira Mesa University Heights area tend to have the lowest travel time. From here, if we wanted to make this table look work professional or wanted to integrate it with any other parts of our analysis, we could, of course, download and share and modify that.